Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Java series. This episode, I'm going to teach you how to read files. Okay guys, so last episode and the episode before that, we learned how to actually read and produce um, input from the console. And then we can use that to do, you know, whatever we want, of course. We can store it. We can output it back to the people. And, yeah, so, but this episode, we're going to move on and actually do some really cool stuff by reading files. And next episode, we'll be able to actually output to files, um, write our own files. And, yeah, so, basically, what I mean by files is I just mean files, really. But the most basic file is uh, a .txt file, which is, you know, a text file. So we can read characters and stuff from the file. So we can actually do that, um, all that magical stuff with a file, I mean an object class called um, file input stream. So this is like basically a byte stream that allows us to read input from files. It's that simple, okay? And so once we establish that stream with the file, we hook it up, we can then read characters from the file like we did before with the input, and eventually we can do even more cool stuff with it, okay? And yeah, so before we had buffer reader, but now we're using file input stream, so let's go and make a class for that. So file input stream, like I said, it's just a it's just a uh, object that connects our um, well it, can, it establishes a stream between the file and our input or whatever you want to call it. So we can use this to actually uh, we can use this to actually get input from files. Okay, so we can read files. So let's give it a name. So we'll just call it um, fin for file input equals new file input stream, and let's see what the parameter is. So the parameter needs to be a string name or the file uh, file object, basically, okay? So we can either provide a actual file object or we can provide a string of the name of the file, okay? And so what we're going to do is actually just um, give it the name of a file. So let's go ahead and make a separate little, um, let's put a separate uh, variable here called we'll string file name, okay? And then we'll set the file name to thing.txt, okay? So that's how that is, but... For us to actually access a file named thing.txt, we have to actually have a file named thing.txt, of course. So let's make that file. So click the root uh, folder here of the project, and then new file, and then call it thing.txt, or whatever you named it. It's fine. doesn't matter what you name it. Just make sure it's not in the source folder here. It's in the root directory kind of thing right here. And so inside of this, we can literally type whatever we want, okay? So we'll just type something simple like, Cody is really cool, okay? And we can keep this all in one line. We can do literally whatever we want. Okay, it's just a file. So yeah, we can do that. So now let's put our parameter here, which is the string uh, of the file name. But we get an error here because we have to handle this exception here just in case it happens. So this exception is called whenever um, we try and create a new object here. And the object, it can't find the name of the file or it can't find the file that it's trying to access. So whenever the file is not found, it generates this uh, uh, this exception here, okay? So just in case this exception, it, exception is generated, we want to have a handler for that. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to catch it. We'll say, um, what's it called? IO exception, I believe, right? Okay. Well, it's a file not find exception, but it's part of the IO exception, okay? So it's like a subclass of IO exception. Um, so we'll just use IO exception. It should work the same way. And it does. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now that we have um, accessed our little file here by, you know, establishing the object, that's what it does. It accesses the file. We can now use this new stream here to do whatever we want. Okay, so if we do fin dot, we can see that we have a bunch of little methods that we can use to uh, mess around with the stream. Okay, but the most simple uh, method that we're going to be using with the stream is, of course, going to be the read method. And what the read method is going to do is going to return a single byte okay so basically it works like the console the buffered reader dot read that's how it basically works like that where it reads a single character from the console and then returns it okay so this will work the same way it's going to read a single character as a byte from the, the file that we established and return it okay so yeah remember it's a byte not a character because this is a byte stream so if we want to actually produce a character or like a letter out to the console when we output it then we're gonna have to uh cast it basically okay but don't worry about that now we're just going to hit work with the bytes for now keep it simple so anyway let's go in and establish a, a new variable here we'll call it int uh file input so this is the input that we're gathering 
So then we'll do fin.read. There we go. So now with this, of course, we can um, output it. So basically what this program is going to do, if you look closely, first we um, establish a file name, which is good because we have this file here. And then we're establishing, establishing this new object here. And once this object is created, it's just going to access this file name and establish a stream, okay? And since we have that stream now, we can call upon its method, so we can do dot .read. And what this is going to do is take a single character from the file and store it into this variable right here. And then we're going to take that variable of the single byte character and store it right here, okay? And yeah, it's going to be an ASCII, it's going to be an ASCII number, of course, because, you know, when you're dealing with bytes in Java, you're dealing, dealing with the ASCII table. So it's going to return one of these numbers here. And yeah, so we'll see in a second. So I'll put that back for now. So let's actually go ahead and run this. Okay, so we get 107. Okay, so that's kind of strange, right? But not really, because if we go to our ASCII table, let's find out which one is 107. 107 is actually a K. Okay, so let's go back to what we typed. And the first letter is K. Good, so that means it read the first letter, it, and then it outputted it like we wanted it to as a byte, okay? So yeah, that's awesome, right? So let's say we have, since we have multiple letters in our file, right? We want, let's say we want to read the whole file. How can we do that? Well, what we can do is um, actually just have a loop here that reads each character over and over and over, or calls upon the read method over and over, basically like we did with the buffered, uh, the buffered reader uh, stream. Okay, so it's very simple. Let's do this. So I'll just um, let's see here. I just cut this right here. Also, we'll do just do do while loop. We'll do, we'll do do while loop, and then we'll say while. Um, we'll leave that for now. So do um, uh, let's see here. Let's have a. Well, we'll just put this here. So we'll do int um, file input, and we'll just leave it uninitialized, or we'll initialize it, but we're not going to give it a value, of course. So then we're going to give it a value here while the loop is running. So each time the loop runs, we're establishing a new um like number for the file input variable basically you'll see in a second so file put is equal to fin dot read okay so it's storing a single character into the variable like we did, la did last time and then once it does that we're just does that we're going to output it here so basically what we did last time so we're just, it's just going to run through the whole file until file input the variable is not uh yeah while is equal to um, negative one okay so that's kind of complicated so let me explain so that means it's gonna loop or it's gonna keep running this read method here and outputting it until or while I mean on while because this is a do while loop so it's gonna run while file input is not equal to negative one okay so why did I choose negative one well whenever you're reading from a file input basically whenever you whenever the the program gets to the end here and it has no nothing else to read it'll return negative one instead of a byte character because yeah, so basically when there's nothing left in the input, it's going to return negative 1, okay? Very simple, but yeah. So that's why the program is going to loop until it reaches negative 1, because negative 1 means it's done, okay? So hopefully that made sense. So let's go ahead and run this here. So now it just gives us a bunch of numbers, right? And then at the end it says negative 1, and of course negative 1 means it's done, okay? So let's try reading this. Uh, so 108 is the last letter, apparently. So let's check this. It should be L. So let's check our, our ASCII table and see if that's correct. 108. 108 is L. Okay, cool. So it worked. All right. Awesome. Um, that's pretty cool, right? But let's see. Let's try and get it to print it out as like an actual character because it's easier to read characters, obviously. So let's actually cast it right here. So now what we did is cast this, this byte or integer as a character, okay? So now then we could try again. And so instead, this time it should be outputting actual letters instead of um, instead of uh, bytes, okay, or numbers. So Cody is really cool, okay? And of course it's doing it line by line because it's reading character by character, so it's not gonna be in actual words. Um, so don't worry about that. But as you can see, this last thing here is like a weird little character. And basically that means that it doesn't know what this means, I guess you could say. Because we, we have negative 1 here, but negative 1 doesn't return anything on the ASCII table as far as I know. Or it doesn't, it really doesn't. It might it might return something on the Unicode table, but not on the ASCII table, but whatever. The point is, it's trying to read negative 1 and output it as a, it's trying to cast it to a character, but there's no sign for negative 1, so it's, it's just going to output this unknown symbol character thingy right here. So just in case you're wondering what that is, that's what it is. Hopefully that made sense. 
So yeah, um, so let's just go ahead and add a thing where um, basically it can tell whether it's a negative one or not. So basically what we'll have here, um, when it reaches negative one, it won't output negative one or this unknown symbol here. It'll say end of file. So it knows, so the, the person running the program knows that the file is done being read, okay? So we can do that pretty simply. We can do this by, um, we'll just cut this here. So we can do if, um, let's see, file input is equal to negative one, then do this. So we could say output end of file, okay? So that will be outputted if the file is equal to negative one. But if it's not negative one, then just go ahead and print it out like normal. Um, what the heck? Got some errors here. Okay, cool. That's fine. Um, so we, um, yeah, so let's try that out now. So hopefully it should be better, more organized once we're done. So it says end of file now. Cool. So now that's better. It's more uh, organized easier to understand okay so we get a big space here I wonder why that is hmm let's see maybe it's because um, hmm let me look at this it must be it's probably just the formatting how it is um, but don't remember that don't worry about that um, it's fine so hmm let's make this even more awesome so remember last episode how we um, we actually have buffered readers and we could read from the console and all that Let's make it so the user can provide their own file name. So whenever they type the name of the file, it'll read any file. So what I mean is, let's get rid of this. So we'll just leave it empty. And then we can have a new buffered reader here. BR is equal to new buffered reader. Okay. And then we'll say input stream reader. Oops. There we go. IR is equal to new input stream reader. And then system.in. If you don't know what the hell I'm doing right now, just watch last episode and the episode before that to understand what this is, okay? So we put IR in here, and so now we could read from the console. So we could do something like, um, well, let's just put it in here, the try statement, because, you know, of course, whenever you're dealing with a buffered reader, you, you have to handle exceptions just in case they happen. So that's why we'll have this here. So by, uh, BR dot um, read line, okay? So this, what this will do is just return one single line. It'll ask the user to type something in, and then it'll return that, that piece of string, okay? So we'll store that into a string called file. Oh, no, we don't need to create the file. It's already up here. So file name will be equal to this. So basically, well, let me show you what this does. It's actually really cool. So the program runs, and then it wants you to type something in. So we can type in the name of the file, so thing.txt. And boom, it reads the file now, so that's awesome. So, um, yeah, so the reason it still works is because we provided a file name, but we actually were able to type the file name in ourselves, and then we use that file name to provide the file name for the file input stream, okay? So basically, we're just manually providing the file name every time, okay? And so you might be wondering, what was the point of that? Why can't we just set it up here like we had before? Well, what if we have multiple files? Like, let's say we want to read this io.iml file. Let's see what happens if we do that. So let's go ahead and run the program. So io.iml and something happens. So we get a bunch of like weird letters and stuff and symbols. It's a pretty big file as you can see. I'm still scrolling right now. So yeah, it read the file. I can read any file, but sometimes the letters come out different. But anyway, the point is now I can provide the file name for any single file that's in my um, that's in my project, okay? So that's pretty cool, right? So um yeah. So hopefully you like that. We didn't have to do that, but I found it to be pretty cool. But let's add something here so they know to type. So they know that it, the, um, the Java console wants wants it to um, provide a file name. So yeah, let's just type this here. So we'll say um, type the name of the file you want to input. Okay. So then, yeah, so let's try that out. Boom. So it tells them to type the name of the file they want to input. So we'll do... Um, thing.txt and then a read thing.txt and then output it to us. That's pretty awesome, guys. You have to admit, that's really cool. So hopefully you like that. And yeah, so there's one more little thing we have to do before we end this episode, before we're done, you know, learning how to read files. We actually have to close the file because while the program's running, it's just going to be using up RAM or um, memory, I guess you could say. Um, 
for the file because whenever it establishes a stream here it opens up a space in your your computer's memory to be able to handle this stream okay so once we're done using it it'd be smart to close the the file because we're not using it anymore okay so we want to have um space right so hopefully that makes sense so it's basically the the easy way to close a file input stream or the file is just to do um well the object dot close okay so just call the close method we'll close the file and that's it okay so let's try running that. Um, okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll do thing.txt, of course. And we get... Well, we get a little bit of a problem here. It um, only reads one thing of input here and then closes. So that's kind of weird. Let's see. Oh, I see. I put it in the wrong place because I put it inside of the loop. <laughs> so that means while it reads well after it reads the first character it's just going to close so i meant to put it out here hopefully y'all caught that but it's okay so we'll just move it oops oh my gosh um so we'll just move it out here outside the while loop so after the loop is done running obviously it's going to be done um outputting all the contents of contents of the file so then we can close it because we're not using it anymore so let's try running this so thing.txt and then it prints everything out, and then it says end the file, and then the file closes. So we can go ahead and say right here, the file, the file has been closed. Thanks for using this program. So that's pretty simple, right, guys? Um, hopefully, you guys found this as cool as I did. Um, I thought this was really fun because we can now actually read any file that we want to. But yeah, so. In the future, we're going to be experimenting with different file types and working with different I.O. types and stuff like that. So you'll see it, um, how this applies. So, yeah. Um, let's just run this one more time. I added a bunch of text here. Okay, thing.txt. And then it read all of it. So, yeah. So you can read pretty much any file size, just as long as it's not insanely long. <laughs> it's probably just going to slow down your computer if it's long. But it's, it's going to work every time, pretty much, probably. So anyway, um, if you like this episode, leave a like. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll be glad to help you. Um, if you want to see the code from today's episode, go ahead and check the description because I'm leaving all the code from today's episode. And then you could use it, store it, um, use it as a reference, bookmark it, whatever you want to do because sometimes you forget code, sometimes I forget code. So it's very important to save your code for later on just in case you need it. And also... There's explanations next to the code. I left some little comments next to the code. So you, if you forget what it means, then you can uh, look. But anyway, um, if you enjoyed today's episode, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.